Hi, I'm Steve Lawson and I'm here at the ACM in Guildford and I've just done a masterclass and I'm going to answer some questions for Bass Guitar Magazine. Why are masterclasses important? Um, I think, I, I remember back to my own kind of time at college and the visiting lecturers and kind of visiting specialists that we had all had a really kind of profound influence on us I think because they were people who were out doing it. And it's weird that, that students find it difficult to, to see their tutors as anything other than college tutors, even though well, a lot of them, particularly at, at colleges like the ACM, uh, have extraordinary real world experience. There's something about having someone come in from the outside who is a touring professional, a creative you know, practitioner or whatever, that ju can just inject a little bit of inspiration and maybe a kind of sideways look at, at, at how we might conceive of what it is to be a musician. I think I li really like the constraints of trying to do it all on my own. I don't use any pre-recorded backing tracks. I never play to a, you know, there's never a kind of dat rolling where there's a thing that's already been recorded. So I have this start point of a completely blank canvas. And it's just me and I can't rely on anybody else and I can't rely on any, anything that I've done before. So I love that, philosophically I like that blank slate, that sense that the next 5, 10, 20 minutes, however long the section is, is it's currently unwritten. So the bass here that I'm playing it today, I've, I've, I had two with me but I only got one out. This one is a, an Elric Bass Guitars SLC, which stands for Steve Lawson Custom. And I worked on this with Rob Elric, who's a bass builder in Chicago. And uh, yeah, I kind of, I stipulated some of it. Like I wanted a particular string spacing and it's 33 inch rather than extra long. And it's semi-hollow, that although there's not an F-hole, there is, this is hollowed out. And then I kind of let him run free with it and it's an extraordinary instrument so this was built for me but you can kind of order an, an SLC. Looking to gig more, put on your own gigs, don't wait for other people to do it. The organizing, I mean there are so many venues especially now that you know the cost of having a venue is really high right now that real estate all over the country is really is a, a premium so venues are panicking so if you can organize 30 people to show up you don't have to wait for a promoter to do it and keep all the money you can go to a venue and say, look, we'll come in on a Tuesday. I've got a bunch of college mates will come down, we'll come down. They just need to make, the, they need to make money over the bar. So find a venue that has a re decent space and, and do it yourself. Okay, so yeah, so this is, this is a show. We, at the moment it's called uh, Illuminated Loops, which is I kind of I really like as a title. Uh, Poppy came up with that. So the, the artist Poppy Porter is from here in Guildford, but the center of her work is the fact that she's synesthetic, which means that she sees sound. So as sounds play, she images and pictures and colors and things swirl around. And so the show with, with me is, is, is that she draws what she sees while I'm improvising and then I respond to what she's drawn. So it's kind of a, the, it's a feedback loop. That, I mean, I, obviously I have sp specific sounds, but I intentionally mess with them. That because I'm playing in order to try and trigger her synesthesia, I play different kinds of things. I don't necessarily play such obvious tunes and I will kind of manipulate sounds just to see what it does to the visual. So I'm kind of, she's like my sort of drawing puppet and I'm going, well, how can I, how can I make this? How can I change the way that she's reacting to things, which is so much fun. What are my next plans? Uh, more of the same, I have a number of different uh, uh, collaborative projects on the go at the moment. I'm looking for more solo shows, more shows with Poppy. Um, I just, for me, I, I tend, it, because I can record so much, I tend not to kind of go, oh, August, I'm going to be in the studio. The studio is wherever I happen to set up my gear. And so I kind of, I, I'm constantly creating possibilities for new music to happen.